A film in three minutes, The Thing. You're in Antarctica, isolated from the world. A blizzard rages outside. Your only company? A small group of fellow trapped and highly paranoid men, with one of them, or possibly even more, hiding something secret. If that sounds to you like the premise of one of the greatest horror films of all time, then you wouldn't be wrong, because that's exactly what happens in Master of Terror John Carpenter's The Thing, a film which frightens, shocks, disturbs, and downright terrifies you to your very core. And if you think I'm over-exaggerating and you haven't seen this film, then by all means, watch it in a dark room and find out. Based on the novella by John W. Campbell, who goes there, as well as the 1951 film The Thing from Another World, the story follows a group of American scientists based in a remote research station in Antarctica, who are one day visited by two mentally disturbed Norwegian researchers Researchers attempting to kill a sled dog fleeing from them. When both men die in the attempt, the camp's inhabitants are left stunned and bewildered at their motivations for harming the animal. However, as each hour slowly passes into the next, it is clear something far more sinister is about to be revealed. Something I dare not go into for anyone who hasn't yet seen the story play out. The Thing's journey to the silver screen, from concept to principal photography to post production was a troubled one for Carpenter. The multiple versions of the script, to the environmental challenges of filming in Alaska, to the complications involving the numerous special effects, would make the creation of the final product arduous to say the least. With the cold reception of the film from critics and audiences in 1982 also acting as a heavy blow to Carpenter emotionally. However, once available on home video, The Thing's reputation would quickly take on new form. Evolving into a cult classic widely considered to be one of the finest science fiction horror films ever made, as well as easily being one of the best examples of practical monster effects to be captured on celluloid thanks in no small part to the then up-and-comer and special effects wizard Rob Bottin, whose twisted, putrefying creations would become immortalised in cinema history for their groundbreaking and nerve-shattering designs. This combined with an excellent ensemble cast, including Carpenter regular Kurt Russell in one of his best roles, to the haunting musical score co-composed by the legendary Ennio Morricone, to the story's slow burn development of its plot filled with ever more increasing paranoia, make the thing not only one of Carpenter's best works, but one of the horror genre's most terrifying of specimens.